So thank you so much, Michael, for coming back to speak with us. It really means the world to me. We've had, we've had so many questions, but before that, give us a brief introductory about your life work and what you're doing right now, just for the folks that haven't watched the first one. Uh, well, I am a science researcher. I've focused for the past, the past 45 years on the information, the evidence in what's known as the Billy Meyer UFO contacts or the Billy Meyer UFO case. And uh, they're, uh, the real pioneers in this, the original investigative team who discovered this material and, you know, it was brought to their attention and went and began officially investigating and documenting it in late 1977 are the the heroes, or I should say the sub-heroes, because the hero of the story, if we can put that in quotes, is Billy Meyer, uh, probably the most amazing human being that's ever lived, as far as I can tell. Maybe somebody else is close. And he is uh, now scientifically and to a legal and scientific standard. This has been proved singularly authentic. There are no other so-called UFO contactees that have even one piece of evidence you see all this above us here um they have nothing there's lots of claims uh are there other people that have seen ufos or accidentally seen it in extraterrestrial yeah sure fine but these contacts are singularly authentic they've been going on with billy meyer since 1942 that's it. for him it's like an 81 year plus running contact case and uh, this is what I call the eye candy uh, behind me. Some of the more than original 1,200 plus UFO photos, films, video that Billy Meyer has taken and all of it in the pre-digital era. For those that don't know, yes, there's photography and filmmaking and video pre-digital analog. You may never have heard that term in relation to, to photographs and films, but it's there. And... Um, Unparalleled, in, incomparable for his trouble. He has had 25 attempts in his life, the last one about a year ago. Uh, there were two people with him that I know at the time who were eyewitness to, to this. I've investigated this since 1979, first introduced to it. And I've contributed, uh, the let's say, the impetus to proving the uh, prophetic accuracy of right now. We have over 250 specific examples of prophetically accurate scientific geopolitical environmental medical and economic information which in and of themselves alone to a scientific and legal standard prove space travel time travel and that meyer himself is one of those space and time traveling people so the rest of ufology complete waste of time in my opinion has nothing <laughs> to hold a candle to uh, compared to Meyer by light years. And it's fine. People can do what they want with that. They can be angry or interested. Uh, I have a, a new online show myself called the UFO Report. I uh, just did the third show the other night. And so basically, this is what I do. I, I love doing this. And um, I've been to Switzerland 21 times, made four documentaries, actually maybe five on on on, on this case. And that's kind of a, you know, a little tiny bit of background. That's great. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, I, I'm going to, of course, link our, our first original conversation that we had to this one, because I think that one's really important for people to uh, make sure that they watch as well. It was really jam-packed with a lot of really great information about Billy and you and so on. So we, we want to yeah. encourage people watching it. The other part is um, there's, of course, a lot of critics and naysayers, and there's just a there seems to be a lot of um, I don't like to use the word hate, but in some cases, hate thrown yeah. your way. And um, there, I've gotten so many, so many questions, but we can just start with a few. So, Billy, yeah. So Billy purportedly took all of these um, images and wrote all of these books and even taken video. And of course, I'm going to direct folks over to, to your website, which is theyfly.com. Well, theyflyblog.com would be the right. best one. Theyflyblog.com. Okay. So I'll have that running across the screen. Thanks. And the reason why I think it's so important, there's so much information on there. 
and and a lot of reading. So if you don't like to read, you're not going to like the information. And, and the reason I say that is because you really need if if you're invested in learning the truth, you really need to take the time to read. So that's that's important. There's a lot of conversations between Billy and the Flarians. Did I get that right? Did you freeze up? Oh, you froze up for a second. You so, did too. <laughs> okay. So, so is it the Polarians, Michael? Doing this? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> having the conversations with Billy. Yes. So Billy Meyer has been having conversations since he was a five-year-old boy with these extraterrestrials. Now, uh, I'll give you the breakdown a little bit. The first person, he claims... Is a man named Svath, an elderly extraterrestrial man from the Playaren race. The Playaren are the people that uh, got called Pleiadians, actually by the, themselves, and Billy forwarded that term, which was really a screen name designed to ferret out all the people who they knew were going to come forward and claim to be in contact with them, meeting them, channeling them, etc. All those people that use the term Pleiadian to identify anything that they're claiming are wrong, to be polite, in many cases, deliberately lying to be profiting from this, but certainly incorrect. There are no Pleiadians there. The player on his second contact person, <clears throat> pardon me, was a extraterrestrial woman named uh, Asket from a different group who work with the play iron. The third contact person, again, another woman, named Semyaze, a play iron. And in the ensuing years, oh, there have been, what, since 80 years worth of these, 81 years of contact, he's met with people who are representative of many different extraterrestrial races. But his contacts for the greater portion of this interaction and information, those have been with the play iron. Okay, that, that really clears things up. Um, let's get to, to some of the questions and comments that some folks have. So like, you know, especially a, a newbie, they see this and they're, they're like blown away. And a lot of them have asked, well, why aren't there pictures of the inside of the ship? I'm yes. sure you've gotten that a million times. So let's address that. Sure. You see, the question itself indicates the complete incapacity of the person asking it to comprehend what they are looking at. They don't ask that question of any of the myriad phony people, the liars that proliferate online claiming contacts. I'm an extraterrestrial contactee. I'm an abductee. I'm an expert. I'm an investigator. They have nothing. So people say, I want more. You see, that's, I'll just put it this way. It's not exclusive to us, mm -hmm. but it is the American way. Yeah. Not enough. Give me more. I want to consume. I don't want to digest. I want to consume. I don't want to think. I want to consume. I don't want to understand. I want to demand and consume. So there, these questions are frankly irrelevant. If you meaning the persons who ask these questions cannot go ahead and start reasoning your way through this evidence. The analyses that have been done for over 40 years showing that these are singularly authentic, the closest photographs, the clearest, the most abundant, then go back and to your make it be believe world of channels and UFO contactees and don't disturb yourself with this. I mean it because you will become disturbed when you dig deeper. You'll realize that you've wasted every single minute that you've traveled through ufology and all the phony hearings and the experts that come and want to take us running around in circles for nothing. Then you'll realize you've wasted your time when you could have learned. And then I did a show about this. This is step one. This is the eye candy. Step two, you get into studying the information. And that is too much for many people because they can't think. Um, has Billy ever addressed that topic himself through his books or any? Because I notice he doesn't make like videos like you do. You're the spokesperson, correct, for him? Yes, but he is on, he is in, we have him in, in films. I've got him speaking. Yeah, documentaries I've seen. 
Yeah, and yeah. interviews that I've done with him. Other people have interviewed him. They've put out videos. Most of, maybe most or a good portion are still in German. But the point is he doesn't defend it because he says, look, I'm not here to convince people. Here it is. And again, what I just said, who's got evidence? How, why are people making demands? Look at on this thing behind me, and, and probably I might be able to bring up something. I'll show you uh, photographs for of a couple of photographs taken from within inside the craft. Of course, the people who can't think, you've got UFO over my screen left, my right shoulder, a UFO behind my head. From inside, another one, even clearer, showing the ground below. They're going to say, well, why didn't this and that? Why didn't he do this and that? So what I'll do is I'll also say, well, Billy did something that nobody else has done either. What did he do? Well, he's got this UFO with lights going off, broad daylight, broad daylight. And you don't have to worry about reading this behind you. It's all available for you. But for the people that can't think and that want more, forget about you know, photos inside the ships because you're all dazzled with sci-fi. So how about this film where behind me, Billy Meyer is to screen right, the lower corner down there. He has stepped into the view here because this is a craft hovering in front of a tree a couple hundred yards away from him. Now, in a moment, what he's going to do, he goes back to his video camera. He's going to slowly start to zoom in on this craft so those people who can think and don't bother themselves with idiocy are going to notice that this is still blurry. Why is it blurry? If the, the, the skeptics say, well, it's just a, a, a model close to the camera. No, if it was close to the camera, he couldn't zoom across and still have somewhat blurriness around that tree and around the UFO. But People can't go, wait a minute, this man in 1981 with one hand, he's doing all this and he, he's taken a photo at the same time, several photos at the same time. He steps into the field, the, the thing there, the video camera's rolling and he's clicking photographs. Mm. No, they don't go, oh, wow, that's the most, there's the photograph. See, he did have a very clear, he had a zoom lens on that camera. Okay. Skeptics so, skeptics have said that it was a da it was dangling, you know, it was something he made and dangling from a tree through wires and ropes and stuff. So, so anybody that uses their brain, let's see if I can bring up some kind of a photo right here. I don't know if I have that one captured, but okay, yeah, there it is. So anybody that first of all, they saw him in that film. They saw him way back. There's a lot of sky. There's a lot of distance. Who's dangling it? From what? Right. And it, I, I mean, this is, Carol Ann, and, and dear viewers and audience, if you don't understand how stupid these people are, the mass of humankind, not just in our country where we have an abundance of it, the mass of humankind cannot think their way out of a paper bag opened at both ends. Mm. I'm sorry to have to tell you that. And I, I don't mind telling you because your future existence may well depend to some degree on how much of this you can comprehend, how much of this you dig into for yourself to determine the, you know, the authenticity and the genuineness of these incomparable photos and evidence because then you'll start digging into the information and realize that the mess of this world, and certainly the mess that America is making of itself and around the world, has long been foretold. We have now gone so far down that road that for many, many things, we cannot come back. You mm -hmm. might want to find out what things you can still avoid. Right. I did read uh, the other day a lot about his prophecies, the conversations that he yeah. has, some of them are very scary and, and very prolific. So the other thing I wanna, all right, so the naysayers are gonna be naysayers. The critics yeah. are gonna be critics, who cares? Um, we believe, and I guess for the folks that do, that's all that matters. <laughs> no, Carolyn, I have to just jump in and tell you right yeah. there because that's the, the one word we don't want people to associate with this material. We I don't mind skeptics, There's so I've known 
I have a thing where I interacted on film with a brilliant man who was a professional skeptic. And a, he's like, now he's in his, he was late eighties or 90 years old. He's a professor and all, but he was reasonable. He was interested. He wasn't, a, he was more scientifically minded than all of these people in ufology. That's the whole thing. He was a much better mind than the skeptics. So instead of believing anything, not a damn thing, because that's what's gotten us to this place. And sorry, folks, if we didn't have a couple thousand years of irrational competing religions, all full of beliefs, no evidence, no proof, if we didn't have po politics and, and leaders supposedly pumping out believe this, vote for me stuff, we might have learned to think, we collectively, humankind, and not gotten ourselves in such a deep, deep hole. So don't believe a damn thing. Find out, check, challenge. I answer questions. That's what Carol Ann has gathered today. We may not get to all of them because you know, I want to emphasize a few things, but we won't avoid anything because there's nothing to believe. Figure this out. Right. That makes so much sense. It really does. Last time we when we talked, we talked about karma and there were a lot of questions about that. I guess it kind of blew away a lot of people thinking that there's really no such thing as karma or the way we tend to believe in karma. And let me just read you one one comment that was very indicative of a lot of the other comments. So um, her name is at Rose Adams 2582, and I'll, I'll have that on the screen. She states, and this is her quote, I've often wondered if I was such a horrible person in a previous life. Why else would I be subjected to such horrible treatment from as early as I can remember from the people who raised me? And there were quite a few statements like that. Like, what could I have right. possibly done? So let's just Nothing. talk about his perception of karma and yours. Let's put it this way, as Billy explains things, but I'm going to try and put some pieces together. If there was karma, then that would mean, you know, reincarnation be real. And you know, of course, Meyer says it's a fact of life. And we know so little about the facts of it. His brilliant book, there's a new brilliant book on rebirth, death, dying, also speak, explains what reincarnation is. You see, there and that's is in no the library, right? I can, I can run a link to that as well. No. That's, is that in your yeah, book yeah. library on it, your it, website? It's in our little shop. I, I don't know. If, yeah. Ah, there we go. It's in our bookshop. Come and you know and and see. And we've got Meyer's books. Maybe a, a sixth of the ones he's, he's written so far. Here's the thing: the universe itself, this thing, the creation, which isn't a deity. It's not a god. It's not a floating being. It's a big, a big thing. We we know nothing about the reality that we live in, but it's not punitive. You see, only religions have deities that are going to dip you in hot lead after you die if you don't believe in them not that you know whether they exist or not if you don't believe in you see every really i have to do this because this question is so important every religion let's say the judeo-christian religions and a few others rest on an illogical premise it's a premise i couldn't bring into a court of law to argue or and i don't mean me i'm not an attorney but i couldn't come in and sit as a witness and I couldn't bring it into a kindergarten classroom and say, children, you have to believe this because what's in this book is true because the book says it's true. If people grasp that that's the entirety of the premise of the substantiation for religions, uh, whoa, how did we ever go down that road instead of saying, well, prove it. If there was a Judeo-Christian God, a Hindu God, any of these gods, it really existed. Here we are, 21st century, whatever. Technology. Could I have your attention, please? Hi, you know, I could only talk to a few folks back then, but I got this whole thing. I got the internet, international broadcast. We don't have that. We're still believing in demons and this and that. So there's no punitive being that says, you were a bad person and you're going to suffer again. Oh, uh, well, you be, uh, you didn't live in eternity in hell because you're back. And now you're going to. No, 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 folks. Look, there are people in the world we all know who are ignorant, evil, delightful, good, great. one. But sometimes the throw of the dice is that the parents, we get parents who are just human beings. They may have been abused themselves by human beings. I'm like, 
we if we were burdened with karma, reincarnation and being a fact of life, we'd never get anywhere. We'd be always having to try to you know clear up the karma from the past life or lives or lives or lives that would go back who knows how, how far. We'd never get a clean slate. But the fact is we do get a clean slate. Now, everybody gets thrown into this thing. Some of us get an easier, some of us get a harder. Sometimes it's a miserable childhood and a great, we make a great thing out of our lives because Billy Meyer gave one wonderful sentence out of thousands. Every human being is the smith of their own destiny. We forge our own destiny. History is full of stories of great people who came from or through the worst possible conditions, brutality, abuse, torment, the children today, the things that are going on that are being done to children today and that have been done to children since time immemorial are horrific. And many will pull through that. And we do not take victimhood upon ourselves. We look at the cards. Oh, like you're in a you know card game. Oh, how could you deal me these cards? Well, somebody had to get them. Mm. Yeah, but why not somebody somebody else did get them? And you're somebody else too. And I'm a somebody else too. So what happens is very different. And I'm not going to try to go into the whole thing that Billy explains so beautifully about reincarnation. There are aspects of things that can remain as challenges, usually in the subconscious, in ourselves. We don't we don't choose our parents like that because we're not yet conscious to choose our parents. There are things that have to do with the spirit form, how it finds the right frequency, the right mother form. These things are not understood by us because there isn't a religion on the face of the earth that knows what's in this material and what Meyer explains. But don't believe my point of view after the study. And I'm still just in kindergarten in terms of the creation and spiritual teaching. But, oh, my, liberate yourself from victimhood and say, well, okay, what do I do? How? That's a three-letter word that I love. How do I do this? How do I get out of that? We have it within us to attract from out and in, inwardly, the resources that are within us to start to climb that ladder out of those holes. So the lessons that we learn in this lifetime, do we take them into the next? Or is that how it works? Like, In some senses, yes. There, there are parts of us we know nothing about. For, just to, for instance, it, we hear about the soul all the time. Soul doesn't exist in the way that people think. What soul refers to is the solar plexus, which is the area of the psyche, the personality, the emotions, lots of things, ego, and our plexus of nerves also that have a lot of, there's a lot of reactivity through the psyche as well, emotional things. That is a, a, a I want to call a construct that actually fills out through, it moves through the body, but its central location is here. It's a temporary construct. Mm -hmm. Our personalities, our I-ness, identifying as ourselves, you know, I'm Michael, you're Carol Ann, that's temporary. Now it's totally bad news. It's, it's something that we as human beings, as egos, don't like. Oh, you only get this one shot? Yeah, well, but there's another part. This part is going to dissolve as you know after death. There is an eternal, immortal part of us that is deep within the center of the brain, I th superior colliculus, I think. I usually mangle it. And that part is eternal. It is the part that reincarnates. And when it reincarnates, there is a whole consciousness block. There is a, a whole source and, and co content of energy, if you will, and information from certainly the previous nation and even beyond that, that is available usually, and I'm giving a, 
this is questionable the accuracy of everything because there are people who explain it better. But this gets impulsed into us in certain ways that are generally below the conscious level. Some people tune into or receive or, or, or recognize when some kind of a from within kind of you know impulse and information is arising. And we do have this assistance because mainly we get the the storage of the positives of previous lives, but the challenges are not necessarily negatives. We don't get the murdered and hung and this. Yes, there's some people, not as many as who think so, who can occasionally tune in or receive an image of something back from an actual previous life of theirs. There are people that accidentally get images from other people's previous lives. So this is like, you know, boiling pot of spaghetti as far as people are concerned. It's messed up informationally the way we are taught it in these other systems. The spirit comes in. When we are born in this world, it's a clean slate. There is no original sin in that sense. That is something else that affects every human on earth, and it has nothing to do with what any of us have done. So we, if we get out of the beliefs and we question question what I said. You can get Meyer's books and he'll explain it. And then you get to test it in your own thinking. Test any of these beliefs, religions, East, West, whatever. You can't, you can't, there's no evidence you can work with. You have to either believe it. Yeah. Not believe it. So it's kind of, that's a kind of uh, overview. You're not a victim of your past personality. So I'm a little confused about the whole karma thing too, the way Billy presents it, because karma is good and, and bad. I mean, we can have good karma and bad karma to use those words. So if we're, if we all experience either one and we start with a clean slate, how do we take that into our next reincarnation? Like, does, okay, does interesting sense? question. So first thing to be said, everything in the universe is an immutable law called cause and effect. Mm -hmm. In our lives, everything, every thought is a cause. Every thought can lead to a feeling. That feeling can lead to another thought, can lead to our actions or inactions. We don't see what happens according to this teaching when we die, when we pass out of this world, those things, the positives and the negatives, are completed to that degree in each life. Things that, you know, are get kind of, that's the finish of that. It doesn't mean that we go back in the next life to the exact same thing and have to pick up someplace. Because every life has new challenges has some challenges of, simply because human life is what it is. We may have had a challenge in a previous life, let's say with uh, making a living. Mm -hmm. In the next life, well, we're still going to be faced with the challenge of making a living. Now, to the degree that we had evolved through and, and recognized the self-responsibility, and this is a core of the teaching, 100%, foundation 100 percent self-responsible for everything in our lives if we had in the, that previous personality grown and developed it will be more than likely in terms of our abilities less uh, it won't be the same kind of a challenge more than likely but it doesn't mean that it couldn't be in some ways a greater challenge because the society the world we come into may have fewer opportunities it might be you know, a very different world and very challenging in other ways. But people come into each lifetime, you know, you see people who seem to have a great deal of natural abilities with dealing with certain things. It could be said in previous lifetimes, that evolution of dealing with those things, uh, you know, in that storage bank, in that consciousness block that is part of it, that is coming in as a more accessible ability that we still have to develop, we still have to apply to this life. So this is where people need to themselves, as you are doing, to go into that teaching. You read and you go, I don't understand. 
you go back and you think and you look at your life. This, the teaching, see the difference between a belief system that is nice and neat and handy. If you just believe in me, everything will be great. Right. When you die. No, I want it great now. Then you'll have to go from my belief system to the teaching of the truth and the teaching of the life and the teaching of the creation energies, the spiritual teaching, because you're responsible for your life. And if there is reincarnation, which seems to be when you start reasoning through the material, oh my gosh, this is not by any means anybody's last lifetime that means the essential spirit form that is indwelling with us. It's not the last time it will animate a personality. And for those that are seeking a little more comfort, it is said, and we can't prove it, can't prove it now, down the line, many, 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 many reincarnations of our spirit form, many newly incarnated personalities that we think of as ourselves, we will know more consciously. We will have more conscious access to all this stuff. We won't have to believe or not believe but human beings, we have an evolutionary destiny that goes into the millions and billions of years. Things that are not taught in any of these controlling, mind-enslaving belief systems that are meant to tie you up. Send your money in because your God needs it. Didn't you know that? Send a check. God needs right. your money to build an up. Oh, please. you know, how long has that been going on? So right. don't, there's nothing to believe here. I, I can't, ex look, I'm still a student here. Obviously, I will be at the end of this life and the next personality, and next and next and next. So he explains it, but we have to go read and reread and reread mm -hmm. and reread because it's not just a piece of cake. What about, I mean, there's a lot of people that, are of like a higher plane of consciousness on the planet. Some of them you'll see called star seeds. And is that no, a bunch no, of malarkey? No, no, no. <laughs> such garbage. This star seed thing is such a load. And remember a few years back or decades, whatever, we had indigo children. I'm sure. Oh, we've... right. <laughs> Why? Every, see, Billy wrote a wonderful thing. He's speaking about his life and everything. To be of equal value. That means every single human being, so let's just deal with this world, is essentially of equal value. Not necessarily of equal ability, accomplishment, intelligence, talent, success, all this. Those are things, those are factors that are different because there are people who, let's say, evolutionarily wise, the, the spirit that animates them is not as quote-unquote old or experienced mm -hmm. as others but this hierarchical nonsensical thinking that people you know it's like the escapism this new age nonsense and I'm, i started doing new age comedy in 1986 i was steeped in this crazy stuff going what the heck is this so this whole stuff is a crazy combination among other things of christianity Egyptology, all the, you know, the, the things that could be brought together so people can imagine that they're flying around in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Get your feet back on the earth, people. This ground yourself. Ground, oops, I don't know, I have to hear that. Ground yourself in reality. And if you do that, then you will begin to see your way out of and through all of it. Yeah, so... On the internet, there's hundreds of thousands of people claiming to either have starseed children or be starseed themselves. And, you know, I don't know if it's this self aggrandizing thing that they're doing, like, but the lie is pervasive. Yes. And it's also based at self aggrandizement with some inferiority complexes with others mm. who think that specialness. They have to raise their kids to be special. And, you know, here's the thing that happens, and it happens in every generation. Young children come in. Uh, sometimes the word precocious is used. Mm -hmm. They have they show a, a great affinity for something. This can be part of, of a gift or talent or, or something, you know, that's within their overall gestalt and their consciousness. And, all, and the parents, oh, my God, I've got this special. Wait a little. 
puberty hits. They could care less about all that stuff. And they're be- you know, the hormones are raging. And it's males, females. I'm sorry, there really are two genders that express themselves in a multiplicity of ways, but whatever. They things go off, and suddenly you got, you know, all these gawky, awkward looking. 12, 13, 14 teenagers and people banging into walls, not knowing what they're doing with their life. That's part of it. And it's also part of it because our society is so poorly equipped and intended to educate parents and children and human beings as to what life is. What's a human being? What do you do? No, no. It's so we're going to funnel you through the miserable, largely uh, public education system, notwithstanding so many of the great people that try to work through with teachers and all. But it's it's a useless thing that absolutely dumbs people down, does not inspire creativity. I'm speaking in the majority. And certainly from my experiences growing up, I had good ones and bad ones. I went to schools that actually had that type of positive thing. But for the most part, if you look at what the society is now, America is a corporation, wealthiest people, and corporations have been encouraged through certain things to sell out the country, take their real business quite literally elsewhere. And any businesses here now focus on getting drone mentality. Come in, do this thing. Don't think for yourself. If you don't do it, you're out of a job and your hand. I mean, if you look at the things that people are willing to do and have to do, allow themselves to be tagged like and get that away from me. And also they can wave their hand in front of a gas pump or, or a Jeff Bezos scanner that he's going to replace all his, you know, uh, actual uh, employees with who work as checkout people. This, what's coming in this country foretold down to so many tales by Billy decades ago trying to wake people up. Hey, folks. Sorry to say, I'm not happy, but I live here too. But right. what? Look, I can no longer, you know, I have my own little show, the UFO Report, and I do headlines. Sir. I'm sorry, as soon as I choose some stories to do that show how stupid, ridiculous, and violent, and aggressive, and ugly the human condition has become because human beings have succumbed to being that, the whole next load of stupid stuff is the news you can't you know it's like okay more and more let's talk about the things that matter in life truly most people here don't eat in in our world today they have no reference points for the history and i'm not a great historian billy meyer is he's seen it yeah literally does billy believe in the higher try to get through these things Does he believe in the higher planes of consciousness? Because you hear a lot of talk about people going from uh, 3D to 5D, you know, consciousness. Like, what is up with that? It's all over the Internet. Yes. Well, Billy Meyer doesn't believe in any of these things because he knows from his own experiences in this life and as previous personalities that he does have access to, one of those rare people, that, as he said, the meaning of life is the evolution of consciousness. This garbage, 4D, 5D, I know people, I know a guy, nice guy in LA, 5D conferences. He's been doing these for years. He's this man. If only we had the money my friend David has spent on these gobbledygook nonsense light being kind of folks light beingness is a real thing that is going to happen for the every one of the spirit forms you know let's just say on earth uh we're talking tens of millions of years from now pops i could even be slightly high or slightly low on that it could be wow. way up because this doesn't this is more mind rot, absolute mind rot. Where's this crap? And I know these people because back, as I said, 1986, that's when this new age nonsense was starting to proliferate. So I wrote a song. I, you got affirmations, you practice right. patience, 
You visualize and you chant a little thief. The belief still says I can't. So you blame reality cause duality's always got something up its sleeve. Well, the joke's on you. Your karma too. Better take your karma and leave. New Age Blues, someone dropped your crystal. New Age Blues, better get a metaphysical. New Age Blues, New Age Blues, I don't want to hear about your energy. And it goes on. And I, I wrote a whole book. I was doing this stuff for years. New Age come songs, channeling, health foods, UFOs, you name it. Because it was so ridiculous and so ripe for satire that, you know, I, this to this day, people are still indulging. You've got these people. We are Pleiadian. Oh, oh my God! We, you know, my it's, it's worse. It's worse they now. Have sci-fi. It's worse now than ever with this five D consciousness yeah. stuff. And all this stuff is encouraged and supported either tacitly or otherwise mm. by intelligence services because they know that people have become en masse now so hopelessly stupid that if you just keep feeding them diversion and entertainment and pointless government committees on one hand, whistleblowers who seen stuff they don't know what the hell it is and new age people and paranormal people they will just continue to chase their tails and lights in the sky mm -hmm. and so these people in intelligence, they're not stupid. They may be a bit evil, as we would look at the dark side. They're not stupid. These are people who know how elements of the spiritual teaching work. They don't know how it works. And they don't care to know about the good stuff. They know about the power and, and success element. See, Billy's stuff isn't about sit around and just meditate. It's how you truly come to think and succeed, accomplish what you want. Mm. Not to end trainings and run around. Awaken the giant within, my friend Tony. I know the guy I, I knew when he was starting out, and I came. He invited me to come to his firewalk experiences yeah. to sing my song, I'll Be My Own Hero. So I've been around the block, and many other people have too. This is just you know, horrific. But any questions you want that you're going to get my opinions and that's worth as much or as little oh, as no, I, I appreciate that. Um, we're probably not going to get to all the questions today, Michael. So we might have to do another one of these because oh, uh, okay. I, yeah, that's OK with you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do want to touch upon something that kind of got my goat. Uh, <laughs> I I I when I discovered the Georgia Guidestones, they just infuriated me from the get go. I just, I don't know what it was, but it was something about them and the messages that just, and, and not all the commandments as in quotes, but some of them. And then when I was reading Meyer's work the other day, mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, had to read it two times because he did also validate one of the, I think it was the first commandment on the Georgia Guidestone about reducing the world's population to 500 million, is it? Yeah, 500 million. And mm -hmm. he was talking about us being overpopulated and yep. dangers of that. And I, I definitely wanted to get your perceptions and his sure. on that whole thing. Okay, here's how it goes. This is a real hot button as soon as you speak about overpopulation, then people think you, you want to kill people. Right. No. Right. Here's the analogy I have used to try to make it understandable to people. Let's pretend this is an aquarium and it's full of water. It's, aquariums are finite things. And you take this aquarium and with the water that's in it, the space, and you keep adding things. You put in little plants and you put in more fish and you put in more fish and you feed them and you get them to keep breeding. Folks, you do that even with a terrarium, you know, little garden things, little plants and thing. It kills itself off. And that is precisely what humankind is doing. Now, where did we get the ideas that we should just keep on breeding? Well, folks, go forth and multiply, said the guy 
who masqueraded as the god of the universe eons ago. Yeah, the, uh, all these gods were human beings, far advanced space travelers. Yes, extraterrestrials helped to screw the world up, but we got to fix it for ourselves. Well, wait a minute. Wait, let's back up here. What's wrong with that thing about the overpower? Well, folks, here's the thing. The people that meet with, you know, with Billy Meyer, let's show one of their nice shiny ships again as a, uh, you know, talk about it. And, you know, the people that pilot these things, they're human beings. They've been around the block a very long time. If they can fly now in these things and they tell us their forefathers, even millions of years ago, were really crazy, gigantic on steroids, you know, Star Wars and steroids, warriors roaming around the universe. Uh, enslaving people, taking over planets, crazy stuff. Well, also, they had to learn that they could only sustain a world in their own world as they refine themselves and all too. You need a certain number of people that are optimal so those people can live in abundance. That doesn't mean amassing stupid pieces of paper and silver coins and having more than your neighbor. It means having whatever you need and want, a concept that we've really messed with. So here's how it kind of works. Every planet that is habitable is of a given size, has certain terrain and, and arable land and land that isn't. We've destroyed so much arable land. I mean, every place we're building. And then people say, oh, there's still plenty of land. And it's not plenty of arable land, as we're going to find out in the coming years, as this stuff starts to bite us badly in the butt. So here's what happens. These people are scientists. They don't believe anything. They either know it or they don't through their critical examination, experimentation. And all. Our world has a certain volume, space, surface area, seas, waters, which are now mainly poisoned everywhere everything is. And they have calculated, they published this information on us, but we're, we know too much, you know. Where are we? I don't, don't tell me to not have kids. Who do you think you're talking to? I think I'm talking to somebody who's going to contribute to overpopulation. We all love babies. That's why, you know, if we're normal, in some sense, healthily, not psychopathic, when new life comes into the world, human life, animals are, you know, cute and human life. We healthy people want to nurture that. But what they're saying is, hey, folks, the multiply thing, it also has a stop to it and let natural attrition diminish the population to a level that if you don't mind thinking a little bit, we've provided the information, these are the population levels that your world supports easily so that every person can have what they need and what they want. That means food, water, air, all pure, clean, unpolluted. You don't need all this junk and, and all the artificial fertilizers that have poisoned your food. and, the, and the, So this is, I know we, we have a very short period of time. To, if people will learn to think, come on, we have articles on overpopulation. I didn't understand it at first. And then I literally was looking at a terrarium one day. I was, I was looking at a thing. I had a glass, you know, that's open at the top. And I thought, well, wait a minute. Uh, that's kind of like our world. What are they saying? It's logic. We will defend against it. We will attack it. And from that, now we have strife everywhere at the core of virtually every human planet. We do, uh, Michael, but, but if we're spirit, mm -hmm. entities, which we are, I believe we are. I mean, I feel my spirit. So that's, I guess, the way, you know, everyone probably does. Then who gets to determine who should be here and not. I mean, if spirits entering the world through birth, isn't that kind of meant to be? Like who's to judge? And and 500 million, that, there's like 8 billion people on the planet. There's almost 10 billion people on oh, the is planet. Oh, is it almost 10? Good Lord. Yes. Here's the thing. It isn't that, see, we've gone so far through being inattentive and, pardon me, stupid about it, that now there are people that do want to eliminate. And Billy's written about this, and they are the ones who recognize the problem overpopulation presents to them 
and they have no compunction. No, this thing with COVID wasn't, that was something else. The vaccine's actually something else. This is all greed and money. Yeah. But the, those that are we might call the not so nice elite could care less about people being here, That's except that it's an inconvenience to them. And they have all, there's a lot of thinking goes, Myers got this information, but most of the stuff you get online is pathetic garbage. They've told you that Bill Gates created this and that. And that. Look, Fauci, these people, Billy Meyer recently said 18 point some million, 18 and a half million people have been, and this will, you can cut this out if you want. Which oh, he, yeah. as a 10 and 12 year old boy, was warning about this disease. Yeah, I did read that. Yeah. So this goes back. And he we know from his information who actually did start this and when and with whom. But people, if you just if we're so anti nature, truly, and when I'm not talking about these bozos that are phony environmentalists that block roads and glue themselves. He's talked about that. That's a whole funded movement from very wealthy people in America to destroy real environmentalism. This is the conspiracy theorists know nothing about the real dimensions. And it's it's a very uphill battle. Um, we're not going to get out of this for a couple hundred years. Sorry, folks. Where, where did he come <laughs> before we go? Like, where where did was Billy clear about who like who gave him that information? Where did did he get it from the Georgia Guidestones? Like, no, 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 no. The Playaren have long explained to him what the optimal uh, population levels are based on arable land, based on this and that, from a scientific point of view. And this has been from the beginning of his contacts a key element. They've said from the beginning overpopulation already is existing overpopulation will ultimately lead to the self-destruction of the people of earth through the things that it brings about when you have too many people vying for ever reduced resources like war terrorism anarchy and oh, people say, oh no it's because they you know so Th this stuff requires thinking doesn't require i mean i'm not i mean i know i'm animated i'm not trying to get people off jumping around it's just people you're not thinking and if you if you think that overpopulation isn't the problem and start established by meyer with information help from these people who actually are a bit ahead of us 200 years ago the people of Earth, the people of Earth would have already created space travel. Instead, we're choking ourselves off with fuming this and that and electric vehicles that still require all this wasted energy to build batteries. We have no idea, and it's deliberate. That's why they have you chasing lights in the sky and bogus aliens and worrying about when you're going to get into the not having a, into your light body people you've been made fools of and to a degree by the very people who don't want you here anymore anymore they said there are too many of these idiots useless breeders and useless feeders that's not our perspective of human life it's simply the way you, we all are viewed by those who yeah they've gone I, mean, I, I have a lot more questions about that but but, but before we go for now mm -hmm. How do the Plarens deal with overpopulation? I mean, you said these these people are human, right? Of course. So here, here's a simple understanding. First of all, they're very long lived, just to throw it in much longer than we we would have those lifespans if we didn't, you know, there's a few things that we can do to regain long lifespans. What they do is they recognize that they are a people. And they have different races in their planets, too, by the way. They recognize that they're a people, that they are if you want to use the word spiritual beings and that the responsibility that they have is that when they bring a life into the world, it must have the full opportunity to develop, to grow, to have what it needs to learn without war, without strife, without 
starvation, mm -hmm. without terrorism, without ridiculous belief systems that have people killing each other for nothing, without civil wars. And their people have gone through that in the past. So what they do is they make agreements, if you will say, that they live by. They have operating principles so that when the population, people who you know come together to bring a child into the world, they have to be qualified. That means that those people have to be developed sufficiently to be responsible parents to a life or two or three, if they pop in that way, and not be inadequate and incompetent. Wow. So that, yes, it's set that way. So, they, so they vet everybody before, I guess there there must be a, an organizing government or body of people that oversee that, right? It is, but it's willful. It's voluntarily participated by because they have thousands and thousands of years of evidence that this is what is is a foundational element of peace for them. Now, these aren't peace love puppies that can't defend themselves. As I say, they come from a long history, and those crafts there have sufficient weaponry to defend themselves. They're not an offensive attacking race, but they know they have to be careful. There are races that would attack them. So they are living in this huge communal five, half a billion people world of balance where they respect that. They don't go, well, I have the right to have a child just because they want it. They say, be so patient. They're, they're all in agreement. They're, they're all in agreement of it. And that's what makes yeah. it so easy, I guess. And they all, all right. benefit from it. Yeah, they all benefit. It makes so much sense. Well, I have so many more questions, Michael. And again, I, still have, I still have reader questions too. So um, we're going to end this for today. And I will definitely be reaching out to you to schedule another one for next week if you're if you're around yes. now. Yeah, we'll do it. And definitely because people need to at least hear how this is being spoken about by people who are studying it. I'm not perfect. I'm not all now knowing, et cetera. These people aren't all knowing. We just have knowledge that would really be benefit us. We wouldn't have people living in the street and starving and killing each other and all the rest exactly. of it. So there we go. So thank you very much for the opportunity. You send me the link. I'll post it too. And I will. We'll I will. You. I'll have it up in a day or two. Thank Good. you so much, Michael. My I'll pleasure. talk to you soon. Salome. <laughs>